and welcome to the Be Mental Healthy World Online Summit. And today we have a very special guest, which is Dr. Shao. Hello, how are you? I'm very well. Thank you for having me on this great summit. Well, thank you for being here because especially considering your history, your biography, and the subject we're going to talk about, which is basically about fear and anxiety. So let's get started right away because I think there's so much we want to cover in this hour or hour and a half. Um, Dr. Shao, can you talk to us or tell us, because basically you've been a medical doctor, right? you have a PhD, and then you moved into the more, uh, how would I say, uh, looking more at the inner working consciousness and working at what is really triggering or causing health issues. Can you talk about that a little bit? First, yeah. First of all, uh, about you know, I, I was in cardiology, specializing in cardiology originally. And I have to say, becoming a doctor wasn't necessarily my choice in the first place because my father was a doctor, my mother was a doctor, my sister is a doctor. So it's like, you know, basically it was clear, well, you better become a doctor too. So I found myself in the medical profession, uh, but I noticed that what I really was missing in cardiology was that what my parents always were modeling. And my parents were these countryside doctors that you don't find anymore, you know, people that are sometimes paid with, you know, smoked ham and eggs by the farmers. And my dad did uh, home deliveries, you know, at times they were like 20% of the little town we lived actually delivered by him. So it was quite a an amazing accomplishment and and the way they were treating people was very holistic. They saw their minds, their lives, their histories and their bodies all as a system that was integrated. And, uh, and that's something that I really admired and I remember one of their treatment methods that really got me already curious about the mind-body connection was their treatment methods for, for wards, you know, wards in the hands of children and uh, was a common problem. Maybe the children didn't wash their hands very often well, at that well, time. Well, t- tell us, uh, because <laughs> what did they do? Because I'm sure there's also like issues that many people have. Yeah, it was it was really fascinating. My, my dad had the most beautiful bottle with some colorful fluid that was like you know, the secret, uh, you know, elixir that he then gave to the children in little vials with a little brush and he told them, you know, you have to do the three times a day, take the brush, put that uh, liquid onto the wards and after a few weeks it's going to be gone. And, you know, there was a huge success rate and everybody was happy and of course everybody wanted to have that specific uh, liquid to heal. Now when I had my first wart on a hand, I told my dad, well, give me this liquid and he said, you don't need it. It's really all in your head. You just have to know it's going to go away (laughs) and it's going to go away. And, and it did. I mean, it was really fascinating then to, to realize. Now now, now we want to know what was in the bottle. (laughs) (laughs) It was actually just water with watercolor. I mean, it was nothing in there. It was really simply a placebo effect. But the belief in it. You knew about that placebo effect and the power of uh, our mind already. It was wonderful. Yeah, and and I really think it's so interesting when you think about placebo that it is giving power to whatever we are taking, whether it's this little liquid from my father or a sugar pill. We believe in that, and then we are healing even, you know, warts that are created by viruses. I mean, this is not something, you know, autoimmune. This is actually something where you can direct your immune system to say, well, that's what I want to have taken care of. So it's, it's very fascinating. But what I find then, you know, looking back, why don't we find the power within us? Why don't we start not believing in a sugar pill or anything outside of us? What if we actually would learn to believe in our innate healing uh, abilities and how can we tap into those more? So that's kind of, you know, where my parents already influenced me dramatically. But, uh, you know, as I said, in cardiology, I was working in a university clinic, big department. It was much more industrial, you know, medicine than anything else. So you basically see a patient, you have five minutes, you make a diagnosis, you do a treatment plan. 
off they go. There was no real uh, care for, well, what's going on on a more psychological level? Do they maybe have stress that creates these heart problems? All of those things were, you know, just ignored or there was just no time for it. So I got after a few years a little bit, uh, yeah, dissatisfied with this form of medicine and I needed to take a time out. So I went into research, basic research. I researched uh, cell suicide, apoptosis, which uh, is one of the most fascinating aspects of, of us as, as human beings. And I went to the US, to Seattle, and when I got into research, I realized that in medicine, we are only told part of the story because basic research really focuses on what the cells can do. What are the, the miracles that we are creating on a daily basis, which we don't understand yet, how we even are able to, to do it. Like, you know, single cells have an enormous ability to change, to adapt, to heal. And I was really fascinated to see the potential, the potential that, you know, as a doctor, I never saw as a doctor, you only see the flaws. So it was a, it was a very eye opening time for me, but the next step for me was to ask, how can we tap into this potential? I didn't want to, you know, just work with single cells or with rats. I wanted to actually help people and help them to find more access to this potential. And this is how I came, uh, became really interested in the mind-body connection, in uh, the subconscious mind particularly, because I think since the subconscious is the intercessor between the body and the conscious mind, it is playing a key role in our abilities to heal ourselves. And uh, so I studied meditation, I studied uh, NLP, hypnotherapy, where, you know, I met you in these courses and uh, and now it's I developed quite a while ago. Actually. It has been quite a while. <laughs> that's right. But we still look good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and honestly, uh, that was, uh, you know, something that transformed me too in terms of, you know, really understanding the inner workings of our mind, as you said. Can you talk about that a little bit? Um, um, you know, what is really the unconscious mind? Because a lot of people might not be aware what that really is and, and why it's so important to, to have a connection with our unconscious mind. Yeah, and I like to call it subconscious. I mean, you know, it's semantics, but, you know, I call it subconscious because uh, I believe the word unconscious is so connected with basically being unconscious, yeah, yeah. you know, being. So the subconscious mind is that part of the mind that's underneath the conscious mind, uh, you know, conscious mind being the, the rational mind, the intellect, uh, you know, what helps us to make choices and so on. The subconscious is in many ways the bigger part of our mind. You know, the iceberg analogy, I think, is, uh, is yeah. just uh, one uh, analogy that works really well, where the conscious mind is just this little part that sticks out that we are aware of, and the subconscious mind is a massive part of our mind that we are often not aware of. Now, the subconscious mind plays a huge role in all of our lives. Uh, it is the source of our emotions. It's the source of our memories. We store our memories in the subconscious. It is a source of our beliefs. You know, when we are uh, taking on beliefs, usually early on in our lives, they are programmed into our subconscious mind and we're living subconsciously from those beliefs. And we're going to talk about this more later on. But the subconscious is also uh, responsible for our body. You know, most of what we are doing physically, you know, whether it's these things that we really don't have conscious, uh, uh, you know, control over like digestion or, you know, your breathing, uh, these things happen usually automatically. But even when you do consciously choose to walk, you are using countless muscles, contracting, flexing, that you do really not consciously control. So you set that intention. You basically say, I want to walk, but your subconscious controls that you actually do move your legs and that you don't fall, all of those kind of things, the subconscious is involved. And, and lastly, the subconscious is also involved in these things we do automatically. You know, often, uh, you know, we all know this, you know, we are, we are sitting at breakfast uh, after the shower and wonder, did I actually wash my hair? Because we were somewhere completely different or we are driving to work and, uh, and we're not even aware of 
what's going on, but something is driving, something is stopping at the red light, something is making sure we are safe, and that something is a subconscious mind. So some people say 80% of our daily activities are controlled by the subconscious mind, and so it's a very, very empowering and, and very powerful part of our mind. Now, I guess the next question then is, uh, as you said, I mean, you know, in a way, the subconscious mind is also unconscious, meaning we're not conscious about yeah. our unconscious mind. So, but is it possible to make changes in unconscious mind and how is it possible? Well, I think the, the key is to learn the language of the subconscious or unconscious mind. And, and the language is basically uh, you know, understanding how the subconscious is communicating with us. So the subconscious communicates through emotions, through images, these internal images we have, through sensations. Uh, you know, often the subconscious uh, communicates through dreams, which uses all of those, uh, you know, internal representations. So the subconscious has a way to try to make itself heard. And one of the ways is through fear and anxiety. You know, fear and anxiety, which is, you know, basically what I've been focusing on for a long time now, a message from the subconscious mind. It is an emotion that the subconscious mind is uh, sending out. And, and for us, often, unfortunately, it's very difficult to interpret it and to deal with it. Now, we can, of course, feed back to the subconscious mind. We can learn through different methods uh, to speak the language of the subconscious and really use this, um, you know, the sensations, the images, and uh, and these uh, emotions to redirect and shift the subconscious so that it's much more supportive than you know it appears for most people. Most people feel the subconscious is either some kind of obscure power that you know you don't ever have any control over or they feel that the subconscious is even against them, that it's like their enemy. I mean, I mm. remember in a workshop where people, you know, told me their beliefs of subconscious mind, and many believed that it's my major critic, it's that block that holds me back, is that what makes me unhappy? So a lot of blame uh, goes to the subconscious mind, but what we need to understand is the subconscious mind does like a faithful servant that what it has learned at some point in our lives, usually early on in our lives. And so like a faithful servant, unless it gets redirected or told we wanna change, it just continues the same patterns. And those patterns are also creating often fear and anxiety. So it's almost this automated computer programs, these automated computer programs within us that, that run unless we do change them. Yeah, yeah. I think, you know, definitely like a computer program, but also with very good intentions. You know, mm -hmm. there's definitely the, the subconscious basically has two so-called prime directives, which are basically to keep us safe and to please us. You know, a computer doesn't really want to please you. It just does right. what it does. But the subconscious is, you know, I, I believe that the subconscious and, you know, of course, not everybody uh, wants to believe these things, but I believe the subconscious is also very connected to our higher consciousness. You know, that what we may not be able to explain, some people call it the soul, some people call it the essence, whether it's existing or not, I happen to believe it does, I think the subconscious is very connected to that. So it is certainly a, a, a very, very important aspect of who we are and, uh, you know, when Einstein said, well, we are only tapping into 10% of our brain potential, uh, I think what he really was talking about, that we are not really using this vast potential of our subconscious mind that could really lead us to much happier and more uh, fulfilling lives. Mm -hmm.